Hi, my name is Dave Ratt. This is the third video I'm doing in um, subwoofer setups for live audio. Today I'm going to cover um, the two primary methods of uh, creating cardioid patterns out of, or out of uh, conventional subs. Cardioid pattern meaning uh, a coverage pattern that increases the volume, that has a uh, increased volume in front and reduced volume behind. There's two basic methods of doing this. One of them is based on optimizing for volume in front and causing some cancellation behind it as well. The other is optimized for maximizing cancellation behind while trying to minimize any negative influence on the, uh, the coverage in front. Um, pretty straightforward. I'm going to try and explain it so that it's um, understandable. Both methods involve setting the subs up one behind the other at some spacing. Now the spacing between the subs would be determined by the frequency you want to maximize your cancellation. Um, typically for subs, you know, that's going to be somewhere between 40 and 50 cycles. Let's use 45 cycles. That's what I typically use. So in order to do this, we're going to want the, the radiating surfaces of the subs, where the sound exits the cabinet, the enclosure, to be one quarter wavelength spaced at 45 cycles. Now to calculate that distance, we would take the speed of sound, um, you know, speed of sound changes in temperature and humidity, but uh, for this we use 1125, it's a pretty good um, approximation. And at 45 cycles, 11, in order to calculate it, you take 1125, divide it by the frequency, 45 cycles, and that comes out to, about, that comes out to 25 uh, feet. So, the wavelength of 45 cycles is 25 feet we want one quarter of a wavelength, so that's going to be about six feet, six and a quarter feet, let's say. So we've got six feet between the front of this box and the front of this box. The sound from this box would radiate, it would travel six feet in distance, six and a quarter feet. This box would be delayed six and a quarter feet, which is, comes up to five point some, eight, I don't know, five, eight milliseconds, and radiate sound so that the sound sums perfectly in front or almost perfectly and you have a perfect summation pattern. The cool thing about this is it doesn't matter what frequency it is. It sums at all frequencies. The pattern will narrow but all frequencies are in time and in phase in front. Now behind we have a different story. The sound coming out of this box is six and a quarter milliseconds, six and a quarter feet late and it's six and a quarter feet back. So we actually have thir uh, 12 and a half feet offset of time be arriving from this box to this box behind. Well, 12 and a half feet is one half of 25 feet, or one half of a wavelength. So we get cancellation, quite good cancellation at 45 cycles behind the enclosures. As you raise the frequency, though, the cancellation will vary it. Uh, if you go to a higher frequency, the wavelengths are shorter. It's not going to be exactly a half wavelength off. As you go to lower frequencies, the wavelengths will be longer. It won't be half wavelength. So you have a maximum sum, uh, cancellation at that frequency behind. But all the frequencies in front sum quite well. All right, let's look at the other setup. The other setup is based on having the rear sub out of polarity. Now for this one, we would put the front sub at zero time rather than the rear sub. The front sub would radiate sound first, and the rear sub would radiate later. And to look at this, we would look from we would look at it from behind the boxes. The front sub radiates sound first. It comes around, and when it passes the front radiating surface of the rear sub, the rear sub radiates sound, which gives us the exact same thing we had before: a summation pattern and maximum volume behind these boxes. Except what we're going to do now is we're going to reverse the polarity of the rear box. So instead of getting maximum addition back here, we get maximum cancellation back here. And that maximum cancellation then flips the coverage over and causes, by hitting that polarity reverse, and causes a summation here and a cancellation behind. The cancellation is better with the polarity reverse sub behind the enclosures than it is with the non-polarity reverse subs that are focused this way. The side effect of that is the addition in front of the polarity reverse subs is not as um, uh, perfect or is not as um, 
aligned as it is with the non-polarity of our subs, and I'll explain why. Uh, to do this, I will grab my copper tubing sine waves that I made out of some stuff I found in my garage. Um, let's say we take two subs and we stack them on top of each other. They both put out sound exactly at the same point in time. They sum quite well. They're very close proximity, and we have an additive uh, waveforms. We have additive waveforms. And because they're putting out sound at the same time, they actually would be an increase in volume. But now what we've done for these setups is we've moved one sub behind the other a quarter wavelength. So let's go ahead and move one back a quarter wavelength. Now we have one that hits us first and the other hits us second. The summed waveform would be a composite of the two with a little bit of loss due to the um, uh, lack of perfect timing of them. But in addition to that, these things are fumbly, in addition to that, we've also time delayed it another quarter wavelength. But we've told the front one that we've moved forward closer to us to wait a quarter wavelength, and we've put them back in time. So from the perspective of being in front of these boxes, these things are now back in time again. Now from the perspective of being behind the boxes, we've got them shifted a quarter wavelength and distance. But the front one, the one that's farther away, is also time delayed a quarter wavelength. So from the perspective behind, we have 180 degrees, or we're out. And so when one box is creating a positive pulse, the other is creating a negative, causing cancellation. But also look what else has happened. The beginning, the start of the waveform, I can't reach over there, but that little guy right there, and on the other side, is offset in time, which means what you would hear one sub a half of a wavelength before the other. So where do we get these cancellations? Well, we got cancellation here, where the two are. We got cancellation here, we got cancellation here, but we don't have cancellation in this region here where one sub has already started moving and the other one hasn't started yet to begin the cancellation. And then once one stops moving, the other one keeps going a little bit. So we don't have cancellation there. So our cancellation only, uh, we have errors in our cancellation behind at the beginning and end and also at any point in time where there's a shift in frequency where it and that error involves one half of a wavelength. Okay, so now let's take a look at the, and that happens behind. In front, we don't have that error. Everything starts and stops at the same time. All right, so let's take a look at the uh, polarity of our setup uh, from the perspective of behind the boxes first. So from behind the boxes, let's, first of all, we'd start with that, and we move one of them farther away, so that one sits back in time. And if you remember, on the polarity reverse setup, the front sub is at zero time, and the rear sub is at a time delay. Well, the looking from the back, it's kind of reversed. The rear sub is actually the front one. So the one closer to us is waiting for the sound of this to cancel. So then that basically shifts this back in time again. So we have this uh, waveform that's perfectly additive. We've, got the, we've done the exact same setup focused backwards, except now we polarity reverse one of those subs. See if I can do this without dropping them. All right, we'll leave that in the video. Okay, so now we've got this cancellation pattern. So we've got excellent cancellation behind. But now let's look at that same setup from in front. From in front of the polarity of our setup, let's start here at zero. We've moved one back in time. And now we're standing up here in the listening area. And one's moved back in time. And we've delayed the one that's farther back. The one that's um, farther away from us is actually delayed, which pushes us to this. Now we have cancellation in front. But remember, we polarity reverse the rear speaker here. So now we have this summation pattern where we're adding. But now look what's happened to the front end here. When it starts moving, we hear this sub first for half a wavelength, and then this one kicks in and we hear it. And then when this one stops, a little while later, this one stops. So what's happened is they're not fully additive at the very beginnings and very ends of any change, whether it's a frequency shift change or a uh, initiation or end of a waveform. Well, that's pretty important stuff, and I don't think it's uh, uh, looked at as uh, or considered as relevant as it should be. Um, what happens is 
when bolts are supposed to start moving and they sum perfectly, you get, when you put two subs next to each other, you get that 3 dB or 6 dB boost, depending, and you get that summation. Well, what it's saying is that at the on, on, onset of an impulse or a, a waveform, you don't get an additive thing. You only get one, you're only hearing one sub, and then you hear another one later. So it gives you this kind of ramp in volume. Uh, I find that to be quite audible. Looking at it from the other side, that perfection of starts and stops is optimized in the cancellation zone for the polarity reverse sub setup. The non-polarity reverse setup, where it's pure time delay, it's optimized for the coverage zone. If it's more important for it to sound good in front than it is for it to reject behind, then you'd want the time delay setup. If rear rejection is your primary focus, and it's more important for it to have maximum cancellation behind, but you're willing to take some sonic degradation in front, then using the polarity reverse setup um, would probably be more optimum for that application. Okay, that's it for today. Uh, I'll do some more as soon as I figure out good ways of explaining stuff. And um, uh, I've got some other videos on subs and a bunch of other sound topics. And uh, check out DaveRat.com. I will do some more soon.